ladies and gentlemen, to the 450th episode of Reaction and Review. Holy shit. You know, guys, every time I hit one of these, every one of these milestone episodes, it always just feels kind of sobering, because I never really thought that the series would go on as long as it has. It feels amazing. And I wanted to find a movie that I thought was going to be special enough to celebrate my 450th episode, and it also had to fit with this month's theme, which is, of course, Long Box Chronicles Month, so it had to be a comic book movie, and I have found the perfect comic book movie. It came out in 2014. That movie is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yes, guys, I'm going to finally cover last year's Ninja Turtles re reboot. Now, let me just um, state ahead of time that... When I saw the trailers for this thing, when I saw all the ads on TV, I thought that it looked okay. Uh, I do happen to remember on Facebook and elsewhere, I read nothing but whining and complaining about some of the dumbest shit imaginable. Nobody actually was complaining about the content of the film itself. No, people were complaining because Megan Fox is in it, and Michael Bay produced it. Because apparently Michael Bay is not allowed to give his, give his fucking money to anything, otherwise the movie is completely ruined. Or it was even more trivial bullshit, like, oh, well, the turtles actually look like mutant turtles instead of green blobs of plasticine and turtle shells. Oh, uh, the... The, the movie is going to be shit because the turtles have visible noses. Swear to fuck, people were complaining because our four, because our four titular turtles here have visible noses. Uh, I was willing to look past all of that stupid, trivial shit, and the ads still looked somewhat promising. And I'm certainly hoping for this movie to, 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 to at least be good. But the only way I'm going to find out if this thing is any good at all is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, guys, I just got my first look at the Shredder. Granted, it was Shredder without his mask, but I, I will say this much, at least. Shredder's a total fucking badass. I'm really, really digging him. Uh, I'm certainly hoping for the story to pick up, to sort of pick up a little bit. It's been, it's been a little bit dry, these opening couple of, these opening like 14, 15 minutes. But still, so far, guys, the movie's okay. Um, I have a question. I totally understand that this is a minor nothing, but it's totally worth mentioning. So, April's watching a video that she shot when she was a kid. In 1999, we know because we have an on-screen date on the tape that she's watching. But the tape is in widescreen and looks to be in high definition. They didn't have high definition cameras, or did, or they didn't have commercially available high definition cam, you know, quarters that you could fit in the palm of your hand in 1999. Whole thing just comes off as a little bit odd to me, man. It's like it's just one of those little little details that just has a bad habit of just bugging the fuck out of me, and I just kind of wanted to mention it. Did they really draw a smiley face on her blindfold? Oh, dude, that is really, really cool. That actually is kind of sort of a nice touch. Yeah, guys, I really am digging this film. And the turtles are actually incredibly, incredibly likable. I am absolutely loving this. You know, guys, I never really would have thought that, that a fight between Splinter and Shredder would be fucking awesome. I'm going to tell you guys, this honestly is probably one of the best fight scenes I've seen in a long fucking time. This is... Oh, and Shredder has magnets that can bring back his fucking launchable knives. That's... That actually is even fucking cooler. Yeah, guys, this... Now, this fucking fight scene? Amazing. You know, guys, the first time that I saw Donnie's tel uh, fucking, like, telescoping bow, I honestly thought it was kind of stupid. But now that I just saw him flip a fucking car, you know, with it, it's starting to look really fucking awesome. God damn, Guys, I never really thought I'd, I'd ever be able to say that 
a bow. A goddamn stick is cool, but goddamn it, this movie was able to fucking do that. That is really awesome. Okay, I totally understand, guys, that this is not exactly, like, a proper time to be wondering this, but... So, Shredder and the Turtles are fighting in broad daylight on top of one of the, I guess, most noticeable sky fucking scrapers in this version of New York City. There is noticeable shit falling from said fucking rooftop, yet I don't see a single news chopper anywhere covering this. You'd think that something like this would be something that, like, every single, like, news agency would be scrambling their, their, you know, choppers for. Would happen to stumble upon a samurai cyborg fighting four six-foot-tall turtles. But, no, we aren't seeing any of that. I just find it to be a little bit weird. Everything else so far is awesome. I just find that to be kind of fucking weird that there are no news choppers in sight during such a very obvious news-fucking-worthy event. Well, guys, that was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let me shut that off. Okay. Well, I can safely say that I had a lot of fun with this movie. Now, let me try to explain why. Uh, writing. I guess the first thing when I talk about writing is... How closely does this feel like a Ninja, a Ninja Turtles film? Uh, because, because, like I said, before I went into this, and before the thing was even in theaters, I was hearing no end of whining and bitching from people who were complaining because the turtles, because the turtles gear happens to look like it was scrounged out of a sewer, and that they have visible nostrils, and that they're all big and fucking muscular, and Megan Fox is, you know, April. All this stupid, trivial shit, and I wasn't sure if, if all of that was going to build up and form something good, you know what, guys? Uh, that well, actually, none of and none of that is writing. All of that is the trivial bullshit that whiny assholes were, you know, bitching about before the fucking movie even came out. Well, guess what? Every single one of those people, no reason to fucking bitch. This thing is this thing is a really well done film, and I am going to start with fucking writing. Our story here, even though it's not the most now, even though it's not the most original story out there, in fact, uh, the plot is very reminiscent of that horrendous, amazing fucking Spider-Man movie, at least here it's still, you know, kind of fun. Our turtles here are all definitely likable and deep. Well, maybe not deep, deep, but I mean, they all have... But but they all but they all have enough noticeable personality to stand out and be memorable, and the way and, and the way that each turtle is dressed also kind of makes them stand out, gives them a little bit of extra added depth. Um, our, our our characters here are all likable, well except for Shredder, but that makes sense because Shredder's the fucking villain. You don't really want a likable villain in most cases. Um, our story here is great. Our action here is awesome, but that has more to do with CG than most than fucking most anything else. Uh, but guys, writing here is totally fun. And mind you, guys, action film. I am not asking for for the world when it comes to when it comes to action films because action films don't have to be ultra ultra deep, and they really don't have to be ultra complex. They just have to be fun. Guess what? Loads of fun. I absolutely loved this. And guys, it seriously guys is more than just the story and the action. It's also the humor. Because I'm gonna tell you guys, no matter what version of the turtles, you know, we are talking about, no matter which comic, TV show, or movie we are talking about, one thing that has always been like a standout amongst this franchise has been humor. And the turtles here spouting out a ton of awesome awesome humor. The humor here is sharp, it's fun, it's quick. I absolutely loved it. This thing, guys, is... This thing here, guys, is one of the finest action films I've seen in quite... in fucking quite a while, because it was actually able... It was able to remember that action films, one, are supposed to be fun, and two, should still at least have some kind of an interesting story to back it up. This thing has all of that, and it's going to make this movie an absolutely fantastic ride for anyone who's just looking for a fun action movie. Now, now on top of now, now on top of writing, we do also have to talk about acting. I went into this movie dreading one thing, because I knew that April 
was played by Megan Fox, and I know that Megan Fox cannot fucking act. She still fucking can't, but I am going to say this. There's something in this movie that I didn't see when she was in the Transformers movies, and that was effort. Megan Fox actually tried. Holy mother of God, I was surprised to see that she actually tried to act here. And you know what? She still, you know, kind of sucked, but I cannot fault her because at least she fucking tried. And even though every other member of the cast is just absolutely carrying her through every scene, you can still tell that she was at, that she was at least trying, which means that when the sequel comes out, she may hopefully have she may hopefully have improved and maybe then she won't be an absolute waste of fucking screen time so yeah guys at least so at least we have that i went into this thing fearing fearing i wasn't going to get anything positive out of megan fox megan fox at least put in some level of effort and i'm going to give her an a for that effort because God damn it, I've never seen her I've never seen her try in any other movie except this one. And it kind of threw me off to actually see that she was in fact trying. Now as for the rest of our cast, the and the rest of our cast turned in a turned in a fantastic job. Uh, I really, really liked how everybody else worked. The acting here is stellar, and it was and it was surprisingly better than anything that Megan Fox has ever has ever put out. I am going to put I'm just going to put that out there right now. This is the finest performance Megan Fox has ever has ever put on screen and even though it still kind of sucks, it's still better than anything else she's ever fucking done, so at least there's that. Special effects. Well, the turtles are completely rendered in CG. So we so we do have to, you know, note that going in. We we do have to mention that the turtles are Completely CG, motion capture suits and all that other kind of happy horse shit, but the turtles look great. The turtles look amazing in the in in friggin' CG. And, and when I say that, I'm also talking about all of all of the detail which was put into them. The fact that the fact that you can see every single little, you know, like line and detail on their skin and on their shell and on all of the fucking gear which which they have because guys donnie has this like backpack full of like gadgets and all of this other shit and you can see just a mountain of detail there you know and you and you can see in every single in in every single turtle's bandana or like headband you can see just mountains of like wrinkles and rips and tears and stitches in certain spots it is a ton of detail that most other films would probably have just you know like skipped past and it looks great and the cg in every other shot also looks also looks fantastic now mind you this honestly should not be a huge shock because because this was a because this was a major a major studio film and it would be far far more shocking if they didn't have amazing cg considering the massive budget this movie was working with uh, boy, what else is there to talk about? Uh, sound mix here is done very, very well. Our camera work here is good. Our lighting is good. Uh, our choreography, our fight, our fight choreography. Again, that honestly, guys, is what makes the action in this film so awesome. Is when we have a fight between between Shredder and Splinter, it is fast paced, high octane. And amazing when we have Shredder fighting against all four turtles on the fucking on the fucking rooftop. Once more, high energy, high impact, fast paced, amazing looking stuff. It just looks awesome. And you know, I think most of that is because all of it is rendered in CG, so people are able to move faster than they would ever be able to move realistically. And it just looks really cool. I am I was absolutely digging every single fight scene. Um, God, what else is there to really talk about? Are there any negatives I can come up with? One of them that sort of pops in, that pops into my head, and it seemed a little bit, seemed a little bit distracting, is all of the product placement. And I totally understand, guys, that, that movies, that movies nowadays almost seem to need a mountain of product placement. And it also makes sense for there to be a ton in the final act when 
when Shredder and the Turtles are fighting on the, on the roof of a skyscraper overlooking Times Square. So you have all those ads on all of those screens and windows in Times Square. I can totally understand those. I don't know why the camera had to be focused on what brand of cell phone everybody is using, what brand of car everybody is driving, what brand of laptop everybody is using. The camera almost seems to just pull in on those, which then feels less, which feels less like product placement and feels more as if somebody tried to dump a goddamn commercial in the middle of my fucking movie. It really was something that kind of sort of pulled me out of the movie a little bit, and the movie would have probably benefited greatly if they didn't have to show us that April was randomly talking to somebody on Skype by putting a giant Skype logo on her fucking phone, as well as also showing us that she is using a Nokia phone by having both the Skype logo and the Nokia logo in perfect focus. You know, it just seemed so out of place and odd. And that really, guys, is like the one negative I can come up with is the fact that the product placement here, similar to the product placement in Michael Bay's tra Transformers films, is absolutely obnoxious, and it just and it just take and, and it just takes away from the film. However, though, that is such a small problem that it that it, it honestly does not ruin the film. And because of that, I can totally recommend this thing. I can absolutely recommend Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. This movie was a fun, amazing action. This thing, guys, was a fun, amazing action film. One thing I really liked, um, being a being a be, being an almost lifelong fan of this franchise, I loved how this movie, even though now even though the movie was forging its own path and was doing its own thing, was still able to reference almost every previous turtles anything. There, guys, are references to the comics, to the movies, to the TV shows. There are so many references to all of that in here that this thing not that this thing not only feels guys like it's forging its own path and it's being its own version of the turtles but it also feels like a love letter to those who've been following this franchise since its earliest days in black and white 1980s comic form this thing is a fantastic movie. Now, is this the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie out there? No. Oh, hell no. This sucker is nowhere near as good as those first two movies that came out back in the early 90s. There's no way this sucker is ever is ever going to match those. However, it does definitely stand out as a very, very memorable film, a very fun movie to watch. I can totally recommend this thing. And I am very happy that I picked this for my 450th reaction and review. I'm so happy that I was able to find a movie this, 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 like this much fun and this awesome for episode 450. Now, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles came off of the Amazon wish list. The person who sent it in was Jeremy, and you can find Jeremy's YouTube channel at youtube.com slash user slash Lord Jarek. Jeremy, dude, I thank you, because I was really curious about this. And when I put it on the wish list, I had no idea if anybody was going to actually buy it. And when you and when you bought it, I was so happy because then I knew. I knew for a solid fact I was going to do it for this year's for this year's Long Box Chronicles month. And then when I noticed that episode 300 or 450 also fell in this in this month, I then knew. I found episode 450, and it is thanks to you that this became episode 450, and for that, I thank you, dude. Once more, that is youtube.com slash user slash Lord Jarek. Now, I still, guys, am just sort of floored by the fact that this is my 450th episode. It just feels so great. It feels so absolutely amazing. So, I am going to go and celebrate that. I am going to go and do something. I am going to celebrate the fact that I have gone 450 episodes strong, and I'm hoping to be here, God fucking willing, for another 450 episodes, and I am so happy to, 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 to still proudly say that I have one of the greatest fan bases in all 
of YouTube. Every single one of you guys are fucking awesome. And I thank all of you who have stuck with me ever since the first episode of this series. I thank each and every one of you who just started watching this series. I thank every one of you who have ever criticized me for anything I have ever done. I thank all of you who have given this series and have given me a chance. I thank every single one of you and you all fucking rock so hard. Now, I, as I stated, am going to go and celebrate, because God damn it, 450 episodes, that is so awesome. Anyway, guys, with that, we come to the close of the 450th Reaction and Review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Peace.